Welcome to Aging Gayfully. We're about adventure, leisure, travel, being a citizen of the world, traveling to destinations, and being a part of the global community as we age and prosper in body, mind, and spirit. Welcome to Aging Gayfully. I'm Josh. And I think that's my cue to say I'm Chris. Did I do okay? <laughs> you know, what are we, like three episodes in? You're going to get it. You will. <laughs> we will be able to nail our intros maybe 50, 60 shows in. <laughs> well, we don't want to rush into anything because we're aging gayfully. Yes, and so that's kind of what I want to talk about today, and I do want to take a different angle. So usually we pick a destination and we build our show around that. I mean, it's no secret that we use travel as a metaphor to talk about what it is to, to age gayfully, to age joyfully, to age um, in a place where you do not feel judged, but you feel free. Exactly. But I think sometimes it's important for us to travel to a different type of destination. So I want to talk about travels of the gayful soul today. Oh, I like this. I don't <laughs> I got to tell you just even as I said that, that's the first time I've said it out loud cuz I typed it in when we were first talking about it. I just got really happy. Like you could probably see it on my face. That just made me really happy to think about. Mm -hmm, I do say it. And it's aging gayfully is about the whole person. Exactly that. It's about living life to the fullest. It's about being happy. I'll tell you what, there is nothing worse than seeing an unhappy tourist. There is nothing worse than you're traveling somewhere <laughs> and you see, you look over and you see someone who's clearly not from there and they are clearly just, I don't know, pissed or sad or it's like, what's the point? Is that a WTF? That is a WTF. We have to travel to a place internally in order to enjoy the places that we travel to externally. And that's what I want to talk about. I, I think it's, you know, it's critical to, to get that um, internal travel to the point to where that um, you can enjoy externally. Yeah, it's kind of like in order to, to have a successful trip. You need to pack up all your things. To what I like to do before I, I leave on a trip is make the bed so that when I come back, I come back to a nice, uh, clean bed. You put all the things away, and you just make your house just so, so that when you travel, right. you feel at ease. You feel peace of mind. And so it's the same way in the head and in the heart. We're constantly traveling. We're constantly on a journey. Whether that's to a different country, a different destination, or if it's something that's just self-reflective. Looking internally at not only our own happiness, but the happiness of our spouses, our, our partners, our family, our community. How are we manifesting happiness in ourselves and in those that are around us. It may sound like it's a very deep question, but it's it's something I think we all strive for, is finding that that peace and joy. It's something that became very real to me this week, which is why I've wanted to talk to you about this. Now, one of the things about this journey that we're on together, you and I and all the listeners, is I do want to be intensely honest. You know, and so... For me, the need to discover how to find peace has come from chaos. It's come from misery. For some reason, this week, beginning of this week, mm -hmm. oh, I don't even remember what the trigger of it was, but I had worked myself over the last few months into such a state of unhappiness and misery. Nothing was exciting, and my family could tell there seemed to be no end in sight. And I wasn't really doing anything to address it, right? Which is, that's just freaking pathetic. Just, just someone just sitting there and basically bitching, right? And, and no one wants to be it around to be, that. But it does happen. Oh, absolutely. And I'm not saying that the, the sources of the discomfort that I was experiencing have changed. Because oftentimes, 
your external circumstances. They don't change, and they're out of your control. And so you're left with the choice of, well, I can just be a miserable slug, or I can do something, even if it's a small thing, right? The problem is is that, that the problem seems so large that people don't even know how to address it because it seems too big to address. But sometimes it just takes doing one small little thing. And so it was, it was Monday, and I think what it was is I think I saw a video on TikTok. I was doom scrolling. Are, are you familiar with doom scrolling? I, I, think, I, get, I think I get it. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. just being caught in the the miserable you you flick of a wrist one bad political thing, a flick of the wrist another bad thing has happened. I mean, and there, are there politics going on in America these days? <laughs> no, 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 the the question is are is there anywhere where politics is not going on in <laughs> in the world or in the United States or in the world, sure. Um well, but as Americans, man, we we over Dose on this political oh, God. nonsense. My British oh. friends, I, I asked them, I said, do you have the politics in the news as much as we have it in our news? Because to me, it's just this this wall of noise with nothing else coming through. Nothing else. No, um, so. And they say, uh, sometimes, but they say mostly the politics that we hear about is American politics. I'm like, well, isn't that just a son <laughs> of a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my God, we're infecting the waters, the international waters. <laughs> So we, anyway, we need to bring some aging gayfully. We absolutely do. So, but I needed to bring it to me, and I think that that's the point of this. So I was right. sc- doom scrolling, and for whatever reason, my TikTok algorithm decided to give me a post that had to do with approaching life a little bit more positively. And I think that that started to kind of get me on a little bit of thinking about, well, how can I? What thing can I do? to break out of this morass, to break out of this misery. And so my one small thing was to try to adopt one habit, right? One habit. I've talked a lot so far, right? So I want you to tell me, can you relate with where I'm at so Mm -hmm. far in my little story here? Oh, very much so. Life has its ups and downs, and we want to have more ups than downs, but we also want to know we also want to know how to get out of the downs when they happen, because if if uh, if we don't uh, recognize it, things start to spiral downward quicker without an es- without an escape. I think one of the keys, and you're you're demonstrating this today, is recognizing it. I might need a tweak here or there. I might need, a, <laughs> or, or and I've experienced it myself. You know what? I need an effing I need an effing attitude adjustment. And it can only come eternally. You can have your your best friends or your spouse or your 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 wife or your husband tell you, "What's up?" But until you recognize your recognize it yourself and make that little tweak, you, you're not going to be happy. Nobody's going to be happy. Exactly. So, and all the people around you are going to be miserable. Or they're going to say, "Okay, enough, enough, enough with you. you. Go over there. Right. Mm-hmm. You go over there. You be over there now, and then you get put back you, to us. We're going to put you in timeout. That's right. And then, but the thing is, is then you have to decide when you're out of timeout because they ain't going to do it. Right. So, what I determined to do, and again, it was it was the flick of a thumb that I that I was shown this idea. I determined to start every day writing what I will call a gratitude journal, right? This is what I've heard, something called a gratitude journal. But what I do is I don't write what I'm grateful for that has happened to me. I write what I'm grateful for that is going to happen to me, things that I want to happen to me. So it could be aspects of my personality Mm -hmm. that I think need to change. Or it could be situations like like I'd like to to see myself in. Now, athletes call this visualization, where you know Michael Jordan has talked about before, where he visualizes himself making a certain move with his body, 
And by going mm-hmm. through that mental exercise, he's actually physically preparing himself. So the the um, the body is following the mind. Um, some people call it manifesting. Hell, manifesting these days is, right. is a whole business. You know, you know, people, influencers talk about it. Books are written about it, and I've not not gone down that rabbit hole because I don't need to do that right now. I don't need mm-hmm. someone else's interpretation of what I've decided to do. But whatever right. you call it, mm-hmm. it is a physical exercise that I do mm-hmm. to put myself in a mindset. As I talked about Michael Jordan's visualization, I talked about the body following the mind. In the same way, every day I sit down with this notebook, and if, if you're not looking at the video, you can't see the notebook, but I've got it right here. And I'm showing a page here that's just filled with things, right? Mm-hmm. And in that way, doing this physical discipline every day, it's kind of like my mind is following my body. I'm going through this routine, and I'm putting myself in a mindset. Uh, I'll share a couple of things that that I put, a couple of them right. uh, I'll keep for myself. But, for example, every day, three times in the morning, six times at noon, and nine times in the evening, I write, I'm grateful to be patient. Because historically, thus far, I have not been a patient person. Mm-hmm. I write, I'm grateful to be in the moment. Same thing. I write, I'm grateful to be unafraid. Merch. Merch. <laughs> <laughs> Aging gayfully journaling notebook. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that uh, I, <laughs> I think we're onto something there. But uh, I think in starting out your morning like this, it's kind of like uh, preparing your day for anticipatory gratification. Okay, say more about that. Well, it, you know, we you know we wake up every morning, and do we wake up with uh, the drudgery of the day, or do we wake up looking forward to the possibilities of the day? Yeah. And what I'm hearing here is that you've decided to wake up to the possibilities of the day and what those and and what you're grateful for and what you can anticipate for the day and that puts your puts you in a different mindset to deal with the day you deal with the the good parts of the day or deal with the struggles of the day you know because we don't want to you know we don't want to be pollyannic and think that everything is beautiful and wonderful 24/7 but we can put our mindsets into that that when there is a uh, we recognize something that we're grateful for, that we're prepared for it. Exactly so. I'll talk a little bit about the end of my week and how it was, I had extra stress in a second because I, I, I this was tested. But what I wanted to talk a little bit more about is as I started to do this process, maybe the second mm-hmm. day, I started to feel euphoric while I was doing it. Now... I've been high before, so I I know what that feels like. I enjoy the drink sometimes. I know what that feels like. It was those feelings without the feeling of disconnection from my environment. It was those feelings without the brain fog. It was just a physical euphoria. I can't tell you why. I don't need to know why, but it is so. And so now, when I start to do it, I have this this feeling. And I will tell you, before we started to record, I hopped on this video chat, I hadn't done mine yet for this morning. And you, you may have noticed before we started this properly that I was writing something. So I did, like I said, every morning I, I do three. So I did one and a half. And I'll tell you what, Chris, man, it got me in a, in a great mindset. Not that I was in a bad mindset before, but I just woke up. And I I don't know why, but it's a thing. I did notice that. Mm -hmm. The great part about that is you don't have to know why. You just know that it's working. No, that's exactly right. But it was tested. So yesterday was a particularly challenging day. And there was some anger in yesterday, not from me, but around me. And there was some frustration and some upset. So I'm not Mm going to say, you mentioned being Pollyanna-ish before, I am not. I am not that. 
I was frustrated in the moment, but my recovery time, whereas before that would bother me way into the night, it didn't. I didn't stew on it. I felt frustrated by it. It took me a few minutes to just kind of process what had happened, and then I moved on. And I'm just a week into this, but to me, that's pretty significant. Without you knowing this, and not and not really, you know, we 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 emailed a little bit this week about what we wanted to talk about today, and and I, I I've been kind of <laughs> reflecting on it, and then what you've just said just hits on an area that I've thought about since we talked about doing something like this. And I think our our viewers and our listeners know that there's, you know, there's a little bit of an age difference with us. I'm going to say probably about 20 years. How old are you? 66. Okay, I'm 52. So Oh, so you're Okay, you're just right around the corner. So yeah, I, know, I, know. I was Come giving you in your forties. Well, that, that's oh. probably Amanda that's in her in the forty in her forties. So. I'm not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> is her age unlisted? Is that what you're telling me? Her, her age is not in the phone book. <laughs> <laughs> Moving quickly along, but I, I, you know, I, I've actually been in kind of reflective mode. Um, for a while here about uh, as a 66 year old <laughs> and, I, and I look back at um, my corporate life, which I dreaded. I, I, I looked at things that at how I used to react to things, especially in and around care, care for myself, care for my friends, work related issues. Um, people perceive me as being very docile. Well, that didn't happen overnight. I mean, that's been a process because I'm really a very competitive person as evident of bowling professionally. And and I would have a temper and that temper would um, hmm. uh, impact me and my decisions. And, and as I've aged – it's interesting that you know you you mentioned what yesterday where you had you know the anger was all around you and yeah and I said you know I used to feed into that and now uh, I think one of the components about aging gayfully whether that is um, from experience or just trying to find your your comfort zone in in your own personal life. You know, what road do you travel? Do you want to travel down the negativity, or do you want to you want to live life to the fullest as you're capable of? I, I think what I've learned, at least from my experience uh, in care, that um, you have to care for yourself and body, mind, and spirit, so that you can care for others, and that you can identify those trigger points that just then you did you did that yesterday, you know you, uh, that anger that's around you that you don't really want to be a part of. And that's kind of the path that I've chose here. I look back on aspects that happened to me in my life now where it's like, you know, a few years ago I'd have been flying off the handle and I would have been effing this. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like not that big a deal. How do you get to that point, though? You know, for me personally as a as a gay senior, it's kind of like – I just don't care what people think of think of me anymore right but that that's not a switch that you can flip there's there's got to be something to that uh it comes from uh loving yourself uh recognizing your talents and skills and and uh, trying to live in that area of comfort and removing yourself from drama Drama is a big word in the gay community. Is <laughs> is there any gay drama here? Well, there's you know there's drama really everywhere, but it's how you respond to it, and you can only control how you respond to things. You can't control as much as we think that we can control others. We really you know we can we only have the ability to control ourselves. There are aspects of ourselves internally that we can't control. We can't control our emotions. Now we can we can bottle them up and we cannot express them, which is bad. That's not 
which is very which is bad. bad. That's that's not the kind of control that I'm talking about because right. emotions they come unbidden. Mm-hmm. You know, you are you know the the whole expression being surprised by joy. Well, you're surprised by it because all of a sudden the emotion hits you. Or how many times have you been? I, I tell you, <laughs> Chris, the amount of times that I've cried at a silly commercial. Not expecting to, and it just kind of hits me. Just gotcha. we, we can't control our emotions. So, and I say one of my problems, and one of the reasons why I'm I've been wallowing in misery is because I feel like I am a person who receives the world around him and responds to the world around him through feelings, through emotion, right, through intuition. However, at an early age. Because I had to, because I had a difficult uh, mm-hmm. childhood, I shut that part of myself off. And so I've lived, you know, for 50 some odd years as a, a person whose right. primary source of interacting with the world has been shut off by himself. How about that? Uh, I think, I, I know personally, I can definitely get in touch with that. And I think all of our listeners can get in touch with with that. And I... Uh, uh, and I'm going to be r- risque when I say this. We're all products of our upbringing, whether it's good or bad, indifferent. Um, sure. You take from that experience, and hopefully you grow from it. I grew out of a, a family environment where everything was pretty much negative. The way that you, the way that I was. Um, encouraged <laughs> i'm going to use that I, if i could put quotation marks around encourage <laughs> was by um you're not good enough or you need to do better you'll never you can never do that and that that mode of motivation that negative motivation thinking like it's reverse psychology or whatever it's like yeah how do you grow out of that you grow out of it by recognizing your talents and skills but that doesn't mean you can easily wash that uh, dirt away. It always, uh, you know, it, it sure. reappears from time to time. And how do you, how do you combat that? And what I like about this, well, I like a lot about this conversation. But finding that, finding that path to gratitude, recognizing your own talents and skills, and using them to the fullest, without. Um, worry or hesitation that you're going to be criticized. That was the other thing that you said that I wanted to unpack, because if people get nothing else from our conversation here today, it is the fact that it's important that you start. It's important that you try. You can hear the the very good and the very worthy phrases of that you said of, you have to love yourself and you have to recognize your talents and your skills. But if you don't put feet on that, then it's just a platitude. And most people stop at platitudes. You know, in the era of social media posts, most people stop at posting the phrase, make sure to love yourself with hearts and unicorns on it. And then that's that's the work that they've done on their self today. You have to figure out for yourself what loving yourself means. Well, for me, it means a lot of things. But in this week, for me... It meant putting these ideas on paper. I can be patient. I can be in the moment. I can be unafraid and all of these other things. Giving myself permission to do that, seeing within myself the possibility and the probability that that can actually happen, having hope that future self is going to look back at past self and say, thank you for starting this process. That's what loving myself looked like for me this week. And then recognizing your talents and your skills really means, because I know what you really mean is, and then finding out ways to do those things. <laughs> you know, this is just, is just fantastic because I think what, what we often get pigeon-toed into is doing things because we have to do them. People have asked me over the years, well, what's your profession? And I, you know, I've, Kind of like, okay, let me think. Well, you know, I was I, got, I was trained as a social worker. Um, I bowled professionally. Um, 
I've worked in rental car. I was a manager in rental car. And so, you know, I've kind of come to the point to tell, and I, I, I love doing the radio. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of had like a cornucopia life. Well, wait a minute. Haven't you worked for somebody for 30 some odd years? And that's, that's not reality anymore. It's not, you know, you know <laughs> It's like I, the, one of the biggest mistakes I made was working for one company for 10 years. It's like we're conditioned to think that we're supposed to do like everybody else does, and that's what where the happiness is. But the, the happiness comes in from following your heart and and using your talents and skills and not feeling like, you know, I know we all need to, we all need to find that path of making a living and uh, you know, that's very important, but in making a living, you want to find that peace and joy and, and happiness and gratitude that matches your talents and skills. And when I, when I, when I listen to you on all your podcast and your, and your radio show on the whole care network, I said, oh, that's, that's somebody that's in joy because he's using his talents and skills in a way that he knows, I think he knows, is bringing him happiness and bringing other people happiness who are listening. It has to be married to loving yourself, though, because, yes, while while I was in, in the moment while I was creating those podcasts and in the it, moment while I was doing the radio show, that made me, that gave me an emotional hit of happiness. Now, because I've married that to this discipline, this specific discipline of how I am loving myself, I'm taking that joy into the other parts of my life, right? Into my work life. But then also, as I'm sitting here doing this with you, as I had an amazing conversation mm -hmm. with a musician on a podcast yesterday, as this week I, I had a ridiculously enjoyable conversation with a wrestler in the UK, it makes the joy that I feel doing that even more and bigger. So I, I, I have to tell you something. I you want to know who my all time favorite wrestler was? Uh I, I I with all of my heart, I want you to say Dusty Rhodes. Oh, Dusty Rhodes was pretty good too, but I I love the Iron Sheik. <laughs> oh, Sheiky baby. <laughs> I love the Iron yeah, Sheik. Jabroni. Yeah, Jabroni. Why the Iron Sheik? That's so random. Was it his mustache? It was his mustache, wasn't it? Uh, because, you know, you, you and he just recently mm -hmm. passed away. He did. But when you get into their storylines and you see, you know, he was from Iran. You know, he, you know, he played that, that, you know, that macho, uh, <laughs> that guy. But, you know, when you listen to the storyline and, you know, how he, you know, how he made himself. I, I just was always, uh, I, I always enjoyed his character because I knew it was a part of him, part of his love and joy about being in America and 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 sharing his his dream. And there was just something, there was just something about him. Of course, his I always wanted a mustache like that too. So, well, that's that's what I really think. I think it was the mustache, and I think it was the. The bulging muscles, that's but just that's me. just me. <laughs> that was no way. Um, well, I, I do want us to come to a close now. We're about at time, and I want to leave folks with your words. You need to love yourself, and you need to recognize your talents and skills. And my words to add to that are do it today and start small if you have to. Baby steps lead to, uh, lead to big happiness. Oh, that's merch. a t-shirt right there. Merch. merch. We're setting it up. More merch. We're setting it up. Merch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. Well, thank you so much for uh, this chat. Um, lovely as always. And I'm looking forward to this journey, not only uh, with you, but with the folks listening out there. So how can the folks get in touch with us and, well, and see can, what we're doing. Well, uh, they visit us at um, aginggayfully.com. And you've got a question, you want to want to be a guest on the show, email us at yesiam at aginggayfully.com. That's yesiam at 
aginggayfully.com. And we've uh, we've got some exciting things planned coming up, planning uh, over the uh, next um, next few months and full speed ahead. And someone's calling. Maybe that's destiny. That's the 90-year-old slut. <laughs> we need to get the 90-year-old slut on the show. And we say that in all... We say that in all kindness because that's how he references himself, uh, and we'll, we will be having the ninety-year-old slut on our uh, on our aging gay fully show here soon. Yes, folks, you can look it up. That's what his driver's license says. <laughs> <laughs> all right, until next week, folks. Y'all age gay fully. <laughs>